Hey guys, this is Kidderob speaking and in today's episode of Great Engineer Terrible Driver we are going to design a 1965 supercar in automation and hotlap it in BeamNG Drive on the automation test track. What driver score will I achieve today? We shall find out. 1965 indeed does give us a really nice body to use for a supercar mid-engined on top of that. And what else would a supercar be than mid-engined? Okay, let's choose this one. It's looking good. And something's weird going on with the uh, cabin size and stuff. So we're going to pick the largest one, the fast pack. Also, that should be the most aerodynamic, even though it doesn't look like... Oh, no, no, there's a slight difference here. Yeah, let's choose the, uh, the first body in this row. Okay, 1965. Um... Panel material. Well, uh, I, I would say because light, more lightweight would be fiber glass, but aluminium has the advantage of actually being um, a little bit more prestigious. So we're going with a full aluminium body and we are going with a monocoque construction. And this means something very important. This must be part of a larger manufacturer making a supercar. Because otherwise, you, you need at least a, um, what is it? Uh, do we have? Oh, no, no, they, they actually require only small factory nowadays. I think back in the, back in the light campaign V2, they require a medium sized factory. Anyway, uh, something to keep in mind here for the size of this. Space frame can be built in a shack uh, and ladder frames as well, so. That's, that's one advantage of both of these. But monocoque requires some fancy, fancy uh, presses. So, yeah, uh, chassis material itself, I think we are going with galvanized steel. It doesn't have to be super fancy. It's not going to be used in hailstorms and and uh, driving through salt water and stuff like that. So it's, it's all good. Uh, Mid-transverse, I believe the body is set up to be mid-transverse. We can switch this around if uh, the need occurs, but um, for now, it's fine. Uh, double wishbone, double wishbone, certainly. Oh, by the way, double wishbone, double wishbone is not a given here. Maybe we need to go for McPherson strut in the rear, because that would give us more space. Because they are going upwards instead of to the sides. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's something to consider. Fit more engine in there. Let's see. Speaking of engine, how about a V12? V12 transverse. <laughs> Best thing ever. Okay, let's see how much we can fit in there. Full aluminium body, of course, and we have 1965. So, uh, how about a dual overhead cam two valve? Hmm. Uh. Are you serious? No, okay, they are not serious. Um, but we do fit a lot in here. Uh, size problem? Nope. We are not going to have size problems here at all. Now let's go with a pretty small engine. And this might still be too large. Indeed it is. Although we want to make it super, super over square. This is pretty over square. How about a 3.5? Oh, that's... That's too scary, I believe. That might be too scary in 1965. Um, yes, yes, I hear the Americans screaming like, <laughs> Triggered! Uh, yeah, now we're, we're making an engine which actually outputs power, you know, so um, that's, that's, that's different. Uh, no, I should say power per capacity. Um, because that is certainly not a feature of muscle car engines. They had some of the worst power per liter uh, imaginable. But, I mean, and this would be pretty nice. But how about a 3.3? This is a nice number, by the way. Okay, can we go to 335? Hmm. Ah, it's so close. There we have it! Okay, I nailed it down. That's the perfect size. We can make that a theme. And head material, also aluminium. And now, yes, we are going forged with this one. 
uh, heavy duty forged, unfortunately. Unfor forged, unfortunately. <laughs> yes. uh, bad jokes. Yay, dead jokes. Anyway, um, we take that. Compression. Where are we going to end up? Uh, well, this is automation. Compression is a little weird. But um, let's aim for nine first, and then we can always riff this one reasonably high. I would think 80 to start off with. And then we can always add to it if we need to. Yes, injection. Mechanical fuel injection certainly is a good thing for an engine of this caliber. Uh, performance intakes. Holy shit, this is, this is very high. How does this even fit in? Okay, I forgot. It's just a 3.3 liter V12. <laughs> yeah, now it will fit. It will fit. Uh, length the doesn't even say anything about the the height yet so it's all good mechanical fuel injection means that we can uh, put in a lot of fuel too this is good stuff ah uh, do we have to set a peak pa yeah yeah okay well hmm well what do we want probably something like 5.5k optimization for this one Ah, uh, don't tune carbs for racing that often, but I, I would think that we want to aim for something of a power bulge around 5.5 to get a, a, a bit of a good power band, you know, so we put the bulk before, way before actually, way before um, peak power, so that we have a nice powerful high-end band, and probably can rev this one pretty high, I would think. I, let's let's aim for 8,000 for now. I would love to go with super leaded. Um, but Forenia doesn't have it. And 1965, maybe we should go with regular because that's the only reasonable fuel that's available. Uh, you want to drive it in future as well. Those damn, damn uh, laws coming in. But let's continue. Long tubular should be good enough. They're looking nice. Let's turn off the arrows. We now know that it's too large. And we go with a single baffled exhaust. Okay, ball float is an issue. Hmm. Ball float is an issue. So how much quality do we want to put in here? I think... Oh, wow. The engineering time just skyrockets. All right, guys. Like... What this setting should be is somewhere around the plus 5 to plus 10 mark, like this. Um, but that would only be possible for a company that has heavily invested into researching top-end stuff. Um, both metaphorically and figuratively. So, hmm, how about we go with a plus three here that is like a minimum that would be would be deemed no problem whatsoever right also engineering times would be uh, quite a bit lower as we are hand building this stuff so we are instead are amping up the production units and sacrifice oh sacrificing yeah sacrificing production units for lower engineering time that's a new feature in the light campaign v3 once it gets out and I think we are on a bit too high cam profile. This power curve just doesn't look quite right. Yeah, the 70s are looking better. Now oh, you can see the bulge moving here. There it goes. Whoop! Oh, 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 that, that over there looks nice. Oh shit, that's very high. <laughs> that's optimizing it to peak power. <laughs> nah, not going to do that. Not going to do that. I want to limit that a bit. Yeah, this is looking nice and round. Yeah, I think it's a pretty good compromise around there. 290 newton meters of torque and 255 horsepower. Okay, now let's limit it down. Whoa, we had to cut it severely. 7,200 only. Our internals can do so much more. Mm, is there any way we can change that? Not really. I don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Dual overhead cam forward. That would be, would be insanity. Uh, no, no, this is fine. 
Now we can also bring the exhaust size down somewhat. Strangle it a bit. And that gives us a better power band up there, but I don't... I think the 255 horsepower is looking decent up there. It's 6.6. Six. That's, that's very good. So, re-optimize the compression. And should be able to go here. No knocking. 260 horsepower. Excellent stuff. And now, let's have a quick listen to this one. This is a beast of an engine. Um, that that should do. That should do. I'm still uh, surprised about this massive build up on top, but I mean that's throttle per cylinder for you. So we wanted to pick the first one out of these bodies. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Fancy, fancy. Big window there in the rear. I'm not necessarily a fan of that, but because you can't see the engine. Ah, would look so pretty in reality though. Anyway, we're going to design this one later on, as always. Now for the technicalities. Automatic slush box with two gears. Yes. <laughs> How did you know? How did you know? Manual 5 gear. Yes, it is. T 292. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, that would be so damn scary. Let's put it up to, to 80 for now, and we shall see where it actually ends up. Open differential because supercar and maybe we need to we need to morph this a bit don't we morph please give me morph please there we go oh that might be a bit too much morph oh yeah that is that is way over scoped now the wheels oh this will be a uh, somewhat expensive because we need to go radials on sports compound and i would think 255's rear Seems reasonable for a car like this. And for the front, maybe 185? Somewhere around there? Yeah, there's basically no weight on that at all. Oh, seeing the exhausts here uh, just reminds me I forgot to choose dual exhaust. Let me just quickly do that. And rescale exhaust size. Bring up the graphs. Oh, we're making more power. Um, now we make less power. I have a nice, nicer power band. I think I'm going with this one. Although... Nah, I don't want to strangle it too much. Yeah, nah, let's keep it at, uh, 50.8. Okay. Solid disc brakes all around? Mm, yeah, I believe so. Otherwise, it gets real scary. Could even have two piston brakes. They're not too large. Uh, how about 270s? I mean, this car isn't very heavy. The engine is full alloy. We have um, a full aluminium body as well. So that should be decent. And we can go pretty aggressive on the pad type. Let's uh, start with 70 and then see how it pans out. And our brake bias should be reasonably equal because there's so much weight in the rear. Under tray, yep, yeah, semi-clad. Some basic uh, semblance of uh, aerodynamics. Cooling, 50, that's fine. We could even lower that a little bit. Like to 40-ish. Yes, 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 I know, I know, I know. But this gives us top speed, and top speed is awesome, yeah. And two seats, obviously. We are going with handmade, and... Oh. Oh. Oh, oh. This is heavy stuff. Premium? Luxury? Yeah, probably luxury. Ah, supercars. They always need so fancy things. Power steering, none. I hope it is still steerable with that. Because hydraulic would completely kill it in uh, how it feels to drive. Not on my end, obviously, but in reality. Um, safety. Interesting. Standard. Don't need anything fancy. Standard 60s. 
standard springs. We don't want this progressive shit. And there we go. Well, I would say pretty good build, Killer Rob, for being uh, the first time through. Just gut feeling on everything. That is not a, a score that is too bad. Some people have been asking me like, oh, could you could you build a car blind and then compare to how it scores when you when you actually tune it? Uh, well, this is it's looking pretty good already. Um, but of course, we can get more out of it. And I haven't even pressed the sport preset yet. It should go higher from here. Yep, there we go. That is roughly how I would set it up. Ah, okay. Top speed, 244. That's not quite as scary. I don't know why the estimated top speed is so damn high. This is weird. But, oh, no wheel spin. That's good news. Okay, this is pretty quick. This is pretty quick for the time. 5.2 seconds from 0 to 100. Yeah. Means we have some uh, rather awkward uh, spacing here. 65. It's not great for performance driving up here because when you're shifting at the high point, you're dropping to lower power levels there. So that's that's not optimal. Um, hmm. But I, I doubt... We can make first gear to 100 really work. That would take all the acceleration out of it. Let me just try real quick. Oh no, look at that. That is bad. Seven sec, no, 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 no. We are going the other direction. And the wheels, the good, good news. We can use slightly more size to the, oh, to the front. Yeah, 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 wait, wait, wait a sec. Wait a sec, we can change that. Terminal oversteer is awful, but we can fine tune things here. We do need more grip in the rear, so let's amp up the front sway bars and reduce the rear. There we go, it's coming down. It's coming down. It's almost tilting. There we go. Uh, even stiff on the front to straighten it out a bit more. Like this. More on the rear. Come on. Is this perfect? Pretty close. Holy shit. Okay, that is intre let's say it's interesting steering behavior. Yeah, very much on the edge. How much does this actually change? Oh yeah, yeah, this is so on the edge that you actually get out a bit a bit more cornering there. 1.09 G's in 1965. Holy shit, this is pretty awesome. Yeah, that seems to be a good bit. <laughs> don't, don't hit a bump or any kind of irregular surface, kids. That that would be dangerous with this kind of steering behavior while you're on the limit. Uh, do we want to build this this crazy or just tone it down a bit? I think we. I mean, I'm losing score. I know I'm losing score, but that that is that is more of an exploit than it is a, re a reality. It's like, for this very extremely specific circle test, driven under these conditions, it's behaving exactly that way, and nowhere else. So <laughs> it's not very drivable, is it? But investigating the bump graph here now. Uh, let's see, can we go lower than this? We have... Ugh, rear load capacity is not very high. And we, I think, oh, no, that, that is... Oh, that's a super off-roader. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that is uh, way too low here. Let's uh, go with something more reasonable. I think... Um, oh, it's too high. Yeah, this is about right. This is about right. No bottoming out. That's something I want to avoid. The steering behavior looks reasonable. Now for the camber. We can fine-tune a bit more. And let's have a look at the mar- Oh, lord, the markets! They love this car. What do the Ferenians think? Oh yeah. Oh yeah! They love it. So, I did not even check how much these things- Oh, that is expensive. 2,500 bucks for the tires alone. Out of 9,000. Yeah, yeah, that's expensive tires. Radial sports compound at 255 16 inch rims. That is expensive. Uh, but I don't want to go to 15s, do I? Let's uh, pop this up. That, that looks more modern though. It was entirely possible to build this back in the day already. I checked the manuals. 
of tire manufacturers from back in the day. So that indeed existed, um, these kinds of profiles. But it would be pretty rare. And we don't actually need that size, do we? But this would probably make it worse. Oh yeah, quite a bit. Quite a bit worse. So no, we're going with the most extreme. We have hired the best tire manufacturers in the world to build this shit. Considering I haven't set up the brakes yet, this is also pretty good. We need to have less power on the front though. Mm, how do we want to do this? Maybe... Oh, we already run into some brake fade. Naturally. And this will be a fine-tuned balance between actual drivability in beam and G where the weight distribution of the car isn't exactly ported and the braking works works slightly differently and so on and uh, well this might be a little too harsh still on the rear we have placed the brake force exactly on the rear uh, grip levels and the front brake force higher than the front grip levels. Usually that should give you a uh, reasonably understeery forgiving braking experience because this is uh, considering weight transfer of course and but in BeamNG it not, doesn't always pan out that way with exported cars so I'm going to leave it like this. This is not min-maxed for automation, mind you. I uh, saw some scores around 154 here with different brake setup while I tried things out. Um, but yeah, let's leave it at this. This is pretty solid. Now we are coming to the stage where it's all about milking a few more points by using the quality sliders, but not abusing the quality sliders. Always keep an eye on your production units and engineering time down here, folks. A bit more drivetrain quality here and there. I mean, we have a reasonably cheap build. And this doesn't add too much to it because we don't use any fancy differential. But pretty standard stuff. The tires might be too expensive to actually increase by a lot. Uh, this added oh how e ah i mean it makes the car a lot better but man this is expensive three thousand four thousand you are paying through the nose for just the tires it's not almost half the car material price but it is worth it plus five oh shit magnesium yes bam sorry forgot about that and we are reaching crazy levels of cornering here already For the interior, probably also wants to have a pop or two, or many more. Whoa, the score. They really like fancy things. High quality. I think we leave it at plus five. We don't want to overdo it. But this one, this one should go up. We need to have proper good steering. Oh yeah, 170. There we go. Again, don't abuse this one just yet, or at least be aware that there will be a base cost tied to power steering none as well, so that will skyrocket if you add too much quality to it. Yeah, very reasonable this build still, not going too heavy on the quality, but man, those stats are phenomenal. This is looking great. Yes, alright. We're probably a lot less affordable now, yeah. You see how this car has turned from a, a pretty broad sports type car into something rather expensive with the quality sliders. But that was our goal. That was our goal. Not necessarily to make it expensive, but to make it like high class. And now, damn, that score is high. Uh, Farinia, what do you think? Yep, they also love it. Maybe... Uh, not quite as strong there, but I mean, GT Premium, holy, holy shit, this is good stuff. Yeah, and our favorite uh, sheiks from Delua, what do you guys think? Oh, <laughs> they can afford everything. Oh, no, no, that's just because affordability is bugged for the region. They can afford everything, always. But I certainly think we are done here. This is looking great. Absolutely great build. 
I hope it drives as well. Let's check a, a few stats. So 251 top speed. That's impressive for the time. And we're doing cornering at low speeds of 1.1 Gs. That thing will be amazing around the track. A quarter mile 16.6 .6, and we have a standing kilometer in 24.6 0 to 100 in 5.1 seconds and 80 to 120 in 3.1 the brakes are decent 34.7 meters from uh, 100 to 0 and it weighs less than 1.2 tons pretty solid but now we have arrived at a time where I need to uh, put some fixtures on this thing. All right, let's get started. Finally, we have it. The Pegasus Forte. It is a uh, car. It is so damn difficult to, uh, to design anything for this, this vehicle, man. That tiny face is so difficult to design for. As you can see, I mean, uh, I did go with the triplets there because we had triplets in, in the engine, but... Um, yeah, and there too. I really like my badging. This is pretty awesome. But um, the other things, I mean, this could be cool. This will, of course, be a prime thing to break down first. Where <laughs> you have the middle one not open anymore or something like that. Uh, I, I think it kind of works. Not really. I'm not convinced. Anyway, wing mirrors, yay. And a bit of chromey bits down there and the rear yeah works better I think that's that's a, a classic look and please ignore this this is just a piece of um, this build does not quite work with the dynamic piping yet it only connects to one muffler right now and that of course will change but um, so ignore the, the little <coughs> appendix sticking out there uh, badging in the rear works nicely too, but the lighting is somehow different from down here You can there there it looks great. Yeah, okay. Well um, That that's the car. It took me way longer than it looks Way way longer also not sure about those rims uh, probably not not time appropriate or uh, error appropriate no idea There's one thing I forgot though I forgot that we have this premium, premium AM radio. So I need to uh, put an antenna here somewhere. All right, well, uh, doesn't really fit that either. Man, this car is difficult to design for. Ah, damn it. But, I mean, it's not about the looks. It's not all about the looks, let's see. Uh, with supercars, it is quite a lot about the looks, but uh, the performance mainly. So uh, there's one main thing remaining that needs to be done, and that is to check out the test track and its performance. So let's give it a go. Is it the Forte not only in name but also in actual loudness? Let's see. It certainly knows how to go. Oh my God, 200 already. It doesn't look... Oh, there's the lift off. And across the line in 2 minutes 19.79.
Whoa. Oh, okay, and uh, let me just show you what it looks like with the uh, lights down. So that you have a point of reference. It looks a bit empty. It certainly looks a bit empty. I'm not so sure. Maybe there should be some round headlights here as well. Maybe a triplet. Something like this. <laughs> Making it super complicated. Ah, oh, yeah. It's... It's not easy. And there we have the rumble of the Pegasus Forte. Even if they turn signals. Beautiful, isn't it? Yes, I figured out which buttons to press. And it's, um, apart from the headlight configuration and the weird, weird front, it's, it's not too shit, I would say. It's pretty good looking, especially from the rear. It's very simple from the rear, though. But, uh, yeah, let's let's see how this thing drives. Alright, of course, fully manual. And let me just get the camera somewhat right so that you can see. <laughs> Holy shit, okay! Uh, we have a car. We have a car. Oh my god, okay, it is very fast. It is very fast. Pretty well behaved through here. Full throttle, yeah. No, it's it's driving well. Oh, oh, can, that's the limit of the grip. But so far, so far, so good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I'm, so far I'm really liking it. First impressions are uh, this car is not too terribly difficult to handle, and. Should sure drive well. And it has a lot of power. This might be fast around here. Alright, give me a bit of a warm up and we shall be back with a uh, proper track time for this one. What a masterpiece of a car! This is so drivable for what crazy vehicle it is. It's actually amazing. Holy shit! You gotta try this! Like, where, usually when, when you build cars like this, it's like, yeah, it's not very stable at high speeds, and it tries to kill you at every corner, and this thing is just, as long as you don't try to steer and brake at high speeds, at like really high speeds, it's perfectly drivable. And, yeah, let's, let's give it a whirl. Alright, here we go. And off the line. Full throttle, second gear, third, early third, and a bit of braking through here. All easy, all easy. 80 kilometers an hour, pretty fast. Hit the throttle, don't overdo it. It has a lot of grip, but we don't want to overdo it. And there, full throttle out of here. Fourth towards Brian's bend, just lift off a tap, a bit of brakes, and then take it easy on the slowdown. And down in second through here. Oh, sausage. And full throttle towards Caswell's carousel. And also Stainford. It's all good. It's pretty fast through here. Whoa, and full throttle again. And on the straight. And fourth. Down the Daffy Flyer. This thing is fast. And fifth. Now, do we have to lift off? No, 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 no lift off. It's perfect. And slow down. Slow down. Whoa, whoa, slight correction. I'm not going to shift here. I'm not going to shift here. 90 is good. 90 is good. And then third. And unleash. And down fourth towards Kirob Chicane. And bricks. Brakes, 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 brakes. And second. And easy through here. Take the curves and full throttle again. And unleash through the pump sickle. Uh, almost want to stay in third here. Yeah, stay in third at the rev limiter. And slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Oh, yeah, no, that was good. Good, good, good. Oh, easy throughout. Oh, nice. Could have given a little bit more there. I don't necessarily want to shift here either. The gearing is a little awkward for this track. 
but we're doing well, doing well so far. And smooth around here, braking, stay in third still. Oh, that's a what? That's a wide turn. Oh, rally car and <laughs> towards the line. Not the cleanest of laps, but there we have it. A hey. boom to 22.41. The Pegasus Forte. Maybe not the best looking car in the world, but damn, what a super car it is for its time. Damn amazing to drive. And this one will probably be the, the ultimate supercar of the area with the least amount of deaths associated with it. So uh, what do we have here? Well, in automation, this car managed a 2 minutes 19.79 and I did a uh, 2 minutes 22. 0.41 in BMNG Drive. That leads us to a driver score of 98.2. Amazing car, and as always, you will find it in the description down below, so don't miss out. And why is this missing its taillights in, in here? What? What's going on? Anyway, doesn't matter. You'll find the download link button down below, and I hope you enjoyed, and see you guys next time.